space that close to the property line is just because it's a pre-existing condition, so it's not a right. an issue. And since there's no modification to the footprint, then that's not going to trigger a review by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Correct. The only note from the DPW was about the third driveway space. Right. The revised sketch <coughs> for what you're proposing to do. I have the older plan up there. I apologize. I'll hold it up. I'll hold it up. I, I saw in one of the photos you submitted that there's an existing gravel space. That's the third space. So you're going to recreate the gravel space further? Yeah, so we will also extend it forward um, to meet the requirements of that third space and do that. We, <coughs> right, we have to extend it forward and keep the width. I mean, we have a very wide, um, whatever the word is, like opening on the street. When we first put that in many years ago, we had tried it out, you know, making sure the cars went back in. Yeah, we made it so it was functionally worked. And it did work, but I guess it was, you know, but did that we expand it? Um, so any other questions or comments from the board before we open it up to the public? Okay, so at this point, is there a is there anyone here that has uh, any comment regarding this project that would like to speak? Move to close public comment. Second. Okay, so the public comment section is closed. Um, the other other piece that we're... Do we have to vote on that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But we can do it with him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All in favor of closing the public hearing, or, yeah, public comment. <laughs> Unanimous. Move to support the, uh, the proposed renovation area uh, on uh, Norfolk. Before, before North you Norfolk, what? Yeah. finish that statement, um, there's a question of whether we're going to waive the traffic traffic mitigation oh. fee, which we no. can just wrap into the mo Please. you know the motion. Um, if right now it would be a two thousand dollar traffic mitigation fee um, due to the very small nature of this, um, staff's recommending that we consider waiving that. So, so it's really the board has the uh, ability to. Uh, a waive the traffic mitigation if the project could be otherwise done by right that before the two family by right was uh, adopted an attached in home structure would be allowed by right would it need the site plan so um, that's why I'm recommending that you know this is like um, was far low, uh, smaller than what previously would have been allowed without planning board approval so maybe maybe the motion can just include yep. whether we're gonna yep. I, I move to Mike. Green. Oh, thank you. That's gotta be green. Uh, I move that we uh, uh, allow for the site plan addition of the district uh, on Norfolk Avenue and uh, the traffic mitigation. We'll uh, take a vote on approving this hearing. All in favor? Okay, so unanimous. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you so Thanks much. for coming out for well such a. Done. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate your help. You could be inaugural post COVID <laughs> hearing here. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, do we have to do anything further with that before we move on to the next yep. one, Carolyn? Okay. Open the next hearing. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the next meeting, um, the next next hearing on our agenda is for a. Planned um, 
Two family, greater than 2,000 square feet by New Way Homes at 148 Federal Street in Florence. The applicant, John Hansel, has, has a, approached the podium. And he's going to give us a little uh, overview of this project. Good evening. John Hansel, New Way Homes. Uh, I'm looking to build a two family over on Federal Street. Uh, this two family will fall under Section 350 6.11, form based criteria for a two family house. Uh, also, two family house is also over 2,000 square feet. Family will meet the goals of sustainable Northampton by having no fossil fuels burning within within it, heating or cooking. Uh, the house will also be entirely electric and it will be solar ready. I had a two family also has the housing inventory in Northampton that definitely has a, a shortage right now. And the two family is what the city and the city council, in fact, Jared, Jared out, uh, Councilor Jared has been looking for. He has said that to me. That he wanted to see more two families, and I think at the last city council meeting and the one before that, he also mentioned that. Correct me if I said something wrong. Um, so he's been asking for this for more units on one single piece of property. With the housing shortage and crisis that they have right now, I want to see makes a lot of sense. Anybody in any the board have any questions? Any comments on this? John, did you say you're putting a garage on here, or a carport, or something? I want to get a carport in the back. I have this thing that I think everybody needs a garage, or at least a carport where they can get out of. Weather. The weather, you know, have a charging thing in there, and uh, be enough for two cars. Draw that up now, uh, so we can get out of the weather and. You know. Any other questions before we open it up for public comment? I just have one question about. I think I saw this comment with for DPW. But it looks like that iron pin in the front uh, corner of the property, you know, the property line isn't really intersecting that iron pin. And they have a stamp survey plan there, so I, I assume the surveyor flushed that all out. But it's usually on survey plans, I see like a, a zoom up close, and there's an explanation for how they determined where the property line is. Well, this one was just taken, and I was just done by another surveyor, uh, LaFarge. And my surveyor went out there and he verified all the tenants that the put in. So if everything's on the money. I don't know why they put that in, nor does my surveyor know why the DPW put that in. Comment? Yeah. Well, I'm just looking at your plan and the property line doesn't end at the iron pin, so that. Oh, the property, you mean the company went past it or something? Or? Yeah, well, it's usually the property lines will intersect at the, at the pin. And when the pin isn't in the right place. I think uh, that's the rear yard of the next one. I think that was actually done up. Uh, Mr. LaVarge. Okay. Yeah, I'm just so saying right here. Oh. <laughs> Carolyn. <laughs> oh, you're all strength. Oh, oh, yeah. Here we go. Usually there's like a, some sort of explanation about why property lines aren't ending at the iron pin. You look up the one that tells us that uh, Mr. LaVarge did and see if it was done by him. Uh, my surveyor just worked off what he had done. That was just done recently by him. What would be the implications anyway of that? Well, oh, I don't know. There's a, is it a 15 foot offset in this zone? Yes, is that the side setback? The other side is also 10 in the front and 20 in the rear. Because it just looks like you're pinned at that 15 foot setback, so if the property line isn't in the right place, then no, so the house would be in the wrong place. We have the SAM survey. Um, you know, there's, that's what we have to go by. Mm -hmm. and, um, 
and if it's if it's wrong, he's going to have a title problem going forward. So I wouldn't say it would be an issue that the planning board would necessarily so um, say continue for or have further discussion. Yeah. I think it's sort of a heads up something. Look, yeah, we'll see I mean, what you're I doing. just I just want you to I don't want you to build the house and then have it be in the wrong place. So <laughs> it's really for your own protection. <laughs> but I don't care what you do. <laughs> Uh, but um, you're saying because the line doesn't add right with end with the pins. Thinking if it kicks yeah. in this way, John, towards 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 the house, that it may that 15 feet at the back of the house where you are. If that clips into like 14 feet, then in theory you're one foot over what you should be on the setback. Right, Chris? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. I mentioned that to my surveyor because I sent all the um, things from DPW over to him. All winter, this is like a very wet site. You probably are aware of that. Uh, huge amount of water on the site, and I don't know. I didn't see anything in the application. I don't know if DPW is thinking about it, but like right now, the way it's situated, it's like a swimming pool. Yeah. Or an ice cream, a skating rink, whatever, depending on what time of year it is. But the thing is, when we get done with it, it won't be like that. So we're going to be tied into the storm drains, the water that's there. not a planning issue, it's really something that's for your own, you know, it's it, yeah. your risk is it, so I just wanted to point that out. Alright. The only other note I saw from the DPW is that just the width of the curb cut wasn't labeled, and it's going to be, you know how wide your driveway is going to be? Well, the thing is, the one is you can go the curb cut, is 15 feet. 15, okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. You can't go anything more because DPW is very strict on that. Once a lot of them may be fleshy, it's a little bit wider. Anybody else have any questions, comments before we open it up for public comment? Okay. Does anybody here have any public comment regarding? Just please come to the podium as, as you. I just speak loudly. Uh, no, you your name and address for the record. <laughs> I'm not against that. So I guess I have a question. First of all, how much housing has gone into Bay State in this area and how much is affordable? And is that something that you all should be, can or ought to or whatever, the proper word is, be concerned about? That is my first question. And then I guess the proposal has to do because the house is oversized. So why did you initially set it to whatever it was about, you know, and now this is a bigger house? So why well, it's good to have, you know, electric and all that stuff. Is it better to provide smaller spaces for people to live in, given what we're dealing with with the climate? So those are my questions. Thank you. Does anybody else have any public comment? Total square footage is. Um, 
the supporting information, I wasn't clear in, in the initial uh, application, it talks about that the supporting information uh, contains all of the detailed project information. It really wasn't there. And now, Carolyn, is, is that the, um, the one notated as Way one four eight federal final because that's the uh, series of floor plans. So I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing any data. So that's one question. Um, the uh, so yeah, the total square footage. Uh, then uh, drainage issues. Um, certainly one of the things I hear from residents, uh, especially in Bay State, that after development has occurred, that they experience. Yards, basement flooding. It's unclear whether this is directly connected or not, but certainly several neighbors around Hinkley Trace um, are wanting to fund all the specifications at that time. So I do encourage um, the board to look carefully at how drainage is done and their need to, with the uh, understanding that we will likely see greater flood events. Uh, with climate change, uh, is there a need to look at those uh, carefully and consider whether the mitigation that needs to happen there needs to be more mitigation than, than currently for these development projects. Uh, so that those are my questions. Anybody else have any comments, questions? Brought up about how many square feet each unit is 1281. And that's a comfortable area. It's not humongous by any means for each unit. I'm extremely frustrated by everybody saying affordability. The fact is, who am I? Columbia Yard by 2 by 4 for 10 bucks. I do this. That's Affordable housing comes from the state of the federal government. I'm a guy that goes to work like everybody else. Everybody in you that goes to work. Folks like the paycheck at the end of the week. Um, people that don't or have never built know everything. They have closing costs in the paper, they won't read the Sunday transfers, and they think, well, I'm going Houses when they're 30 feet wide, this one's 24 feet wide. And they're not extra wide houses. Now the only thing they can come after me with is they're unaffordable. If I sold them for what cost me to build them, it still would not be affordable. And they don't realize that, but they keep saying, and it's just, it's the next, the only thing they got left to talk to. And they don't really realize, nor do they really much care, but they just want to throw something. It's really tiring, and you know, on the forums, on the Northampton forums about these houses are unaffordable, they're this or that, but yeah, I'm, I'm a private individual, I'm not to make a living. And if they're more affordable, they can sell their houses at a very affordable price and take a loss. But I know darn well, they're going to put their house on the market, they're going to go for top dollar. Very tiring, and if somebody has something to talk to me about that's intelligent, a conversation, something they want to talk about, I have to listen. I think that was probably a question more for aimed at the city as to our well, a lot of what we're doing as far as I don't think that's really aimed at you oh, right, right now. Of, it's, the, yeah. You know, we're here we're here to look at this particular yeah. um, you know project tonight. But um, I do we do hear the question is you know what are we doing? To assure more affordable housing, so that's just separate. I think, I think, um, Mr. Hansel, for you, you answered the question about the total square footage, and then Alex asked if we had the final information here, which looked to me like we did. It looked like you've got a 
uh, basically a permit set here from um, Park K. Miles. The part that's missing typically is, and it was submitted, it's just that the building department didn't get attached to this application. It's just sort of the, what's submitted to the building department says, you know, exactly the square footage total, and um, that's sitting at the building department. It did, get, it did not get transferred over, but sort of what, to respond to the square footage question, Anything anywhere in the city, no matter who's building it, whether it's residential or commercial, anything that um, will result in the construction of, of more than 2,000 square feet um, triggers planning board review. That's the only reason why this is here, and it's more than 2,000 square feet because there are 1,200 square feet per unit plus the carport. So it's not, an, and um, you all have talked about this before on the board, that the median unit size in Northampton is around 1,700, 1,800 square feet for um, um, a residential unit. So combined together, these are two smaller units, um, but the total square footage uh, is bumped up over 2,000, and that's the only reason why this two family comes before the planning board, and because of that, it triggers compliance with the new um, two family design standards requiring the um, enter the all electric um, heat component. So just wanted to clarify that. Um, maybe while I've got the mic, you may not uh, just to respond about affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, affordable housing is by definition meeting the needs of people who um, only have incomes that are 80% or less of the area median in this region. So everyone in this room who owns a home would not qualify for affordable housing. That is subsidized housing. Um, there's a difference in what we like to talk about is attainable housing, which is sort of the next step meeting the needs of people who are at 80 to 175 percent of area median income. And two, and of course, building two units on one property disperses the cost of that uh, land acquisition across two units instead of just for a single family detached home. Um, so this definitely meets those um, goals of trying to create a mix of housing types so that they can be more attainable to people of a more modest income that wouldn't qualify for subsidized affordable housing. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure. Should we? Claudia wants to speak again. Well, you can decide whether you want to take new comments only or. Uh, yeah, it, it would be great if you have something to say that we haven't already addressed here tonight. It's connected to my opening comments. Is it related to this project? Yes. Yes. This project. Yes. It's related. I feel like I did. My question was addressed to the board, and I feel like the language is a bit insulting that the gentleman is using for people who raise questions. I'm just saying the business about where decisions get made. That the planning board is a planning board. So when I say how many units have gone into Florence and how many of those are affordable, and I know there's a legal definition, but people in the public understand affordable means a school teacher could buy a house or rent an apartment or whatever. So that's what I'm talking about, and it seems that's kind of what I'm here to try to untangle for myself and maybe for you all. If, if people, we're, get, we're getting development, how does the planning board ensure that it's not all housing that's out of the range of school teachers or preschool teachers or people? What is, what is a plan from the planning board? The truth is there's nothing we can do to this. We don't have the power, and we aren't embodied with the power by the city or the state, and we also, there's actually no functional way we can do that. That's an issue of how the economics of housing in our country is set up. And we cannot possibly relitigate this issue on every possible project that we come before us. So I would submit that we move on. And okay. If you're telling me the planning board cannot make a plan about how to have affordable funds. The, the, the planning department is, in, is with the planning board. We're a volunteer group. We come here to hold hearings mm. and to accept public comment on specific projects. You know, um, 
zoning and codes and all of that all initiates with the planning department. Okay, great. Thank okay. You. I don't want to. I'm yeah. Thank you. We're, we're here to make sure that the applications are fairly adjudicated against what the rules already are for everybody, not depending on who they are who comes to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, motion to close public hearing. I make a motion to close public hearing. Second. Right. All in favor of closing public hearing? Unanimous? So, board members, any further questions, comments, thoughts? I would encourage, I mean, this, we, we run into this a lot in Northampton. It's a city made out of pre existing conditions. Uh, I would encourage the councilor to talk to his other constituents about. I mean, this is pretty, pretty clearly seems to be a situation where the neighboring houses are draining onto this and what was an empty lot for a long time. The answer about drainage is not going to be something they're going to like to hear is that they're probably, their water is going onto this lot and it's probably going to go the other way. That's my hunch. I don't know that that's for sure. But that's, that's something that, uh, welcome to politics, I guess. <laughs> so, I, I think, I think it's, a, it's going to be a hard issue to, to deal with. But the uh, truth is a swimming pool has to be drained. It might get better. I mean, if they are putting probably putting drainage back into right. Well, I think we heard from the applicant that yeah. that he's helping the neighbor not yeah. drain to his property. Yeah. I mean, I think that from the topography, it's clear that, um, and I sent this to uh, one of the abutters and the um, um, to, um, David is that all the lots on Riverside Drive sort of funneled down, so this has become sort of the detention pond, if you will. Um, but it, it appears that it dissipates, so the soil is maybe good. <laughs> but there are also ways to address that, right? There's, there's yep. a lot of solutions. Um, I would say DPW recommended to all the applicants um, in this round to um, that um, a sediment control plan be considered I think maybe um, that I'm not suggesting you make a condition about that, but I think a simple condition saying that all sediments have to remain on site. You know, so there's no question about whether it's appropriate to be sending silt into the street or into the budding neighbors. So you can certainly do that. The applicant also um, is aware of the traffic uh, mitigation requirements, um, and so typically those uh, permit conditions are such that that um, mitigation for the two new units on this property um, be made at the time of certificate of occupancy because that's when we see the additional is the urban residential B district um, and because of the size it triggers site plan review two new units so it would be one time payment of $2,000. Okay, so what I heard is if we do choose to approve this, it will be with the condition of um, one-time payment of $2,000 for uh, traffic mitigation and the requirement that all sediment remain on site. I move that we approve the project with conditions as read. I'll second. I'll second. Okay, I'll second. Okay, all in favor of approving. Um, the second unit at, I'm sorry, two family greater than 2,000 at 148 Federal Street, Florence. Five, yes. Okay, thank you everybody for that one. Now we'll move on to our third hearing tonight, which is a site plan regarding a detached unit on a parcel with an existing two family at 88 Crescent Street in Northampton. Um, and that's Michael George and Kristen Berry George. Would you like to uh, tell us about your project? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
developer. My wife and I have lived in Chesterfield for 20 years. Up there, raise our kids there. <coughs> Yeah, why don't you give us a tour? Do I use mouse? You can use the mouse? Yeah. Here's the existing house. This is Crescent Street down here. Here's the existing condition pictures. Um, I didn't load it in this PDF. Um, I'm prepared for analog. I didn't know. <laughs> so anyway, here's the sort of the existing. This was taken about a month ago. This is the Crescent Street. Where we're proposing to put a small cottage. Closer up to the back of the house. The back of the house faces Crescent Street. And um, there's a path that comes up from Crescent Street up to the existing house. This is a view from the Round Hill condominium parking lot side. Um, the, <coughs> of the garage. Can you clean up the vegetation along Crescent Street? Recently? No. Else. We saw it being more overgrown than that picture. Pretty overgrown in the front yard and everything. Yeah. Still. I think it was huge on the other side of the growth. So um, we're pro proposing to do two options. First option is to um, existing single family, a two family. Garage and small cottage down here, down or near Crescent Street. Now there's two cars parking, really one here and then one where the existing garage is. Parking from um, two spaces to five spaces to accommodate three residential units. option is basically this disappears, cottage, and there's an apartment above the garage. The footprint is almost the same as maybe a little, like a foot wider, and there's stairs on the side of the garage. So, um, and, you know, as, as we, we thought about it, it was Purchase the property, we're supposed to close at the end of the month. 
move into the existing single family home, make it some modest um, improvements, to make it existing hasn't been a lot of improvements done in a long time. And then either to start construction on the uh, cottage and garage or the flat uh, with the apartment. So just there, begin construction, um, and then once that's complete, move into the cottage and then begin uh, renovations on the two. And then when we're done, the other thing I was reading, it's not like we're trying to like squeeze every ounce of profit out. Part of it is like, you know, the, the plan is for living conditions basically because we want to move in and that house is too big you know, for, for us as it is. So that's why we want to make it into a two family. And we want to build some place to live um, while we're renovating the no. two family. That's, that's a long project. Yeah. And we also want to, we haven't decided which we think is the best for us. You know, we, our plan is to move in, live there maybe for a month or two, come up with a plan with the landscape architect, see what we feel is right. Us, whether it's a garage apartment or if it's the um, cottage. You know, we've had a lot of input. Um, we met with Karen, um, nice enough to introduce us to the neighbors and have a meeting with us, and we had lots of good input. And, you know, it was very respectful and thoughtful. Um, a lot of good ideas. Not surprisingly, people, neighbors, abutters who are closer to us definitely prefer the apartment over the garage. Yeah. And I've got some other people that have said, not so publicly, that they're like, no, I think the garage would be good. I mean, no, I'm sorry, the cottage would be really good. Um, and I know some of the, some of the, um, and some of the, whatever, against the cottage. Mm -hmm. Some of the whatever. arguments. Yes, yeah, some of the arguments against the cottage, basically, that it doesn't like, fit in. It's out of character for the neighborhood. And a couple things to that is like there's so many different architectures in that neighborhood. I don't know what would fit. I mean, there's Victorians, colonials, there's cottages, apartments. There's and, and and the other thing is part of it is like on that side of the street, you know, houses before it and after it on the west side sort of big lawns and they sit back and very grand and they're beautiful. This one is already a little different because it doesn't have a grand front lawn that faces the street. The front of the house actually faces the road condominium parking. The back of the house faces the street. So it's like it already has a different relationship with Crescent Street than any of the other houses near it. So can you clarify? I don't think you can apply for two options. Just what are you applying for? Which one? You got to tell us which one. I don't think we can tell you. You got to just come to us with an application, right? Yeah. I mean, I think the original application, just to clarify, uh, the original application had the cottage. I think that this latest version is not to have the cottage. I think that. Um, could certainly, if, if the cottage is approved, which was the initial intent, mm -hmm. um, if he decided not to do that and just put the living space above the garage, um, that could probably just be an um, administrative amendment if you didn't want to approve both options. I think it makes sense to go ahead and evaluate the cottage because that's what was submitted, but it doesn't necessarily take, um, I mean, you can always do less than what's permitted in a permit that's granted by the planning board. What does the cottage look like? Is it a bedroom downstairs or upstairs? Or is it two story, one story? It's a single story. Green light. Green light. Green light. Green light. Green light. Green light. There were uh, <laughs> elevations in the. It's, all in, yeah, it's in the application. I didn't get a chance to see that. I was reading comments. I was driving by the property and then. Are you going to keep it a, was it a, it was a bowling lane or a basketball? It was a bowling alley. Bowling alley. I think gymnasium. Yeah, it's a gymnasium. It's a single family gymnasium. Really? Yeah. 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 Right. So you can ask us, you got to rebuild the bowling alley. Sorry. Okay. You want our opinion. Oh. 
This is a rendering of the cottage design. But it's planned to be a single story. It would not be a two story, but either way, it'd be a single story. The cottage is 720 square feet. Um, that is a, you know, a rendering of what we come up with with a porch around the front and the side. One story, one bedroom. This is the This is the view. From above, from the main house. Mm -hmm. and the, the zoning address issue where the garage is at a different elevation from the house substantially? Does it matter? No, that's not addressed. The driveway would be coming off of Crescent? No. No, the driveway currently comes off of yeah, uh, the right away. Yeah, yeah there'd be no driveway off Crescent. The same From Crescent Street, the um, cottage. Now, there's no landscaping in here. We did go with the apartment. The this would be story, just the garage. The apartment would be above it. Would be put it in relationship, I guess. Um, the house itself is, I think, 28 under 30 feet tall on the on this side to the river. Elevation comes down, so the, the garage itself would be around 27 feet, but it also would sit about three or four feet lower. Now the garage with the apartment would be three to four. I think we just want to talk about the cottage for this application. And if you're going to do the apartment with the garage, that would be an amendment, and Carolyn will decide if that's an administrative. So I, I weirdly, I, thank you. I, I looked at this, this house. Can you, can you really make that turn in there? I mean, there's a beat up garage there that's there currently. You really can make that turn into that? Oh, okay, back to the cottage. 
there were some, I just saw some of the comments that said it was 10 feet off the Oh, it shows the 10 feet is the setback. The porch is about 17 feet off the street. The itself is, um, setback is 10, though, right? I mean, that's yep. the required setback is 10. Right. right. Questions from the board before we open it up for public comment? This time, is there anybody in the audience that has? Okay. Please step to the, I want to call it a podium. 
Station. Uh, state your name and your address, please. know that we did read all of this. Uh, yeah. I just just know I'm that we did. We all read line. all eight of the, the line by letters. Line. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Fowler. So I appreciate the opportunity to address the uh, the planning board and uh, the planning committee tonight. Let's see, we're Paradise. I live at 94 Crescent Street, which you can see on the plot plan is, is right next to uh, the property that Mr. George is acquiring at 88 uh, Crescent Street. So I'm going to butter uh, to the property there and I want to make a few things clear at the outset of, of my comments. One, I'm not opposing the project in general, the conversion of this one family lot into a three family property. Um, uh, you know, I worked with and supported uh, John Hensel who built a house in what used to be my backyard there on the corner at 181 Round Hill um, and you know, this is, is right next door going to add parking, it's going to change the character. Yes, all of those things are true. But what I wanted to come in and talk to the planning board about tonight is that um, the planning board is not a rubber stamp. The planning board wants to take input about different plans. And there are ways to do this conversion, and Mr. George referenced um, this, uh, in a way that is less impactful to this area. So, uh, Ms. Fowler, you mentioned that you've read all the comments, and I appreciate the planning board taking time to do that. Um, in the comments, um, you'll note that there are a, a few considerations uh, around uh, the planning board looking at infill, and even back to the 2008 presentations on infill, there's lots of discussion about gray um, uh, brownfields redevelopment, carriage house uh, conversions, garage conversions, that sort of thing, um, and the importance of keeping in uh, the nature of, of, the, of the, the area. There was um, uh, a quote there that I mentioned in my comments, infill must be designed in a way that surrounds the, the, the surroundings and creates a sense of place. And Mr. George is right. I've appreciated his conversations with me and the other neighbors to discuss all these things. Um, we're looking forward to having him and his wife as a neighbor. Um, that there is all sorts of architecture on Crescent Street. There is a lot of multi-use housing already, uh, large houses that have been turned into multi-use family housing, apartment buildings on the other side of the street, condominiums behind where I live. But there is, uh, along Crescent Street, and, and you were mentioning the overground part of 88, so you know it well, a part of Crescent that gives it its character. And people come to Crescent to walk on it and it's a beautiful these are not enormous lots. These are actually lots with the houses set basically at the back of the lot with the front of the, the property's public facing, so a very public uh, presentation of those spaces. Uh, they look, they take pictures. This row of houses is just a bit of a treasure in Northampton. And so um, what I would like to ask uh, the board to consider tonight is um, Mr. Whitehill, you mentioned you're asking for one or the other. Mr. George is asking for the, the new house on, on the bottom. You notice the possibility of a carriage house residence. Um, so uh, I'm asking that um, the new house option not be approved. Um, and I am in favor of the, the parking, the three family from the one family conversion, uh, and the new carriage house. Um, but the uh, nature of this space of the, this row of green space that creates this, this place for people to walk and enjoy in Northampton would be very altered. And as you would see from the pictures, um, the, the yard right now is, is beautiful. Um, the back of the house is kind of the front of the house. It's got a big porch and things like that. It sort of sets up 
um, and looks down onto the street like the other houses and creates the same feel. It's not a misfit really in terms of feel across it. Um, I appreciate that the, uh, Mr. George has a lot of landscaping to, 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 to do around this house. Um, but in, in looking at the, the goals of the city, which were you know the sustainability plan, that can absolutely be achieved. It can be achieved with the alternatives that Mr. George talked about, converting this one family lot to a three family lot with a garage conversion. Um, and it can be consistent with uh, the character of the area, which is something for the board to consider. And these places, once we get rid of them, again, sometimes it makes sense, like my backyard where John built the house. Um, and sometimes it takes a public space, which is almost like a park along Crescent Street. Again, public facing space is what most of these lots are, and really change it um, in a way that is not necessary to accomplish. In terms of significant trees and the abutting concerns, um, on the site plan there, you'll see a silver maple. It's five to six feet in diameter. Um, you'll note in my comments that the planning breaks actually 350 provide um, a guidance on the critical root zone. The critical root zone for this tree would be 120 feet, taking the, the smaller of those diameters. Um, so that's 60 feet out from any side of the tree. The foundation cut is proposed to be 22 feet from the tree, which is well within the 60 feet. The canopy canopy goes to Mr. Sturgeon there. I appreciate the arborist report. Um, I've hired a lot of experts in my time as an attorney and done many siting things with experts. Um, and if the, the cottage plan is approved, I think a, an independent arborist for the city may be a, a good condition to, to put on this um, because uh, I tend to get a very friendly report from my experts and it's usually opposed by the other excise expert saying something completely different. So something to, to always uh, bring an independent expert on uh, here would, would, I think, be helpful. But again, not opposed to the project and appreciate Mr. George reaching out, talking to us about this. Yes, it's going to change things. I know some of my neighbors are very concerned about losing that back garden uh, to parking and other things. But I think you know we can do this. We can go from one family to three families, but we can do it in a way that preserves a really important and Thank you. Appreciate your sentiments and your comments. Anybody else? Your name and your address, please. My name is Edward Feld, and I live at 97 Crescent Street. Um, I want to second everything that uh, was just said. There is, uh, I think, this row of houses on Crescent Street. charming part and very special part of Northampton. Um, there is not any uh, outside of, of, of any fronting directly on the street. All of them are on the street. And this is going to stand out as a some and um, really change the character of the street. So those of us who, who find this place um, uh, are, are deeply Thank you. Uh, Chris, hi. Uh, I live at 80 Crescent Street. Uh, but, uh, and I, too, I mean, I wanted to acknowledge um, what, what Peter has said about how uh, the neighbors together and was, was very explicit. Say that the house that I live on, 60 Crescent, is not, uh, I have no best interest in it. See, this law is not within my guidelines, even though. 
but I did want to I did want to underline what. Um, Anybody else who wants to speak? Public comment? Can I just clarify the jurisdiction um, for the board? It's a site plan review. It's for one additional structure on the property. Um, the board, it's an allowed use, so the board um, has to approve the permit if it meets all the technical standards. That doesn't mean it's a rubber stamp. But there are there are no discretionary um, evaluation criteria, um, such as evaluating one portion of the block versus another and determining that this portion of the block is preserved as it is. So those are more subjective standards that aren't applicable to a site plan. Um, that, so, so, in, that, so we're looking at the new cottage. We're not looking at all about the garage. So the, the you are looking at the um, well, you're looking at the garage in that the whole project is under site plan review. However, the only thing that's triggering site plan is the fact that it's, there's a new residential structure being proposed that's detached from the uh, from the existing structure. So um, what that means is. Um, you know, the, Mr. George could come in, create a two-family today, and build that garage, and it would never come before the planning board. So it's not the garage, per se, that's triggering the site plan. It's only this new cottage. And so you need to evaluate to make sure, to make sure that this cottage, the location, the orientation, it's meeting the, the general design criteria for but that's the only piece that's triggering site plan review. I just had a one comment, one question. The question was um, if we are approved to do the cottage, we end up finding, because one of the arbor's recommendations was to find this tree that. We're going to air spade and check this out. Find out that the roots problem. Um, do we have any? And then the other thing, the other question was I, mean, I think I think the cottage is. I mean, we're not married to either one yet. We're trying to decide. And then 
we've made that clear. <laughs> yeah. um, here, if I was going to like, if I was going to, and I was thinking about it, it's like, I put the cottage there, and I put the cottage. I would, I'd be on this front porch, drinking my coffee, talking to people 15 feet away. I wouldn't be 85 feet away up here sitting on my I would be like sitting right there saying, how you doing? Not our business. Yeah. And then my last question is, if we decided not to use capital, go work in that out. We wanted to do the apartment bus drive. Is that just It depends on that you don't have to look at the architectural, you know, if, if it's still within the height and it's, and you also need, to, well, it's only 10 foot setback, but you need to make sure the garage meets the setbacks for the residential structure. So yeah, it's it's on the rear. Sorry, sorry. I'm gonna, we don't talk about an application. Can we just not talk about hypothetical applications that don't exist yet? If you want to do that, send it to Carolyn. We'll look at it at that point. We got another application tonight. Let's just. You have an application in. Let's talk about that one. Okay. okay. Karen will, is very generous with her time after on her other working hours. <laughs> That's it. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, Lou, Lou can close the public comment. Second. We got it. We got it. Okay. All in favor of closing yeah. public comment? Five. Unanimous. Unanimous. Okay. So, uh, questions, board members, questions, questions amongst ourselves regarding this property project. I don't have any questions, but um, I think this law as it, as it is, well, I haven't seen it, I didn't see it today, I will fess up to that, but um, as I remember this law from spending a lot of time in the Crescent Street neighborhood, it was very overgrown, and it's like completely out of character with all the other grassy lots. So I almost think putting the cap the cottage in and kind of clearing it down a little bit will actually make the overall character of the neighborhood better. Because um, right now it's, it's kind of like a plate. It's like a unkempt vegetative mess in the middle of like all this well manicured Houses that are closer to the street and facing the street as you go right on the corner of Crescent, and I don't know what that point is. Going up the hill, going up Round Hill Road, maybe it is Round Hill Road, close to both of those streets. So I'm really not too worried about the cottage. About, I thought the DPW was saying it might be located on top of the facility serving the existing house, so that might be more of a concern than it's sited on the property. But I have no concerns. I don't have any concerns either. I actually like it. I think if you're going to do another accessory dwelling, you're going to give somebody the opportunity to have a first floor living space that serves a population that doesn't always get served because a lot of the older homes, two families, whatever, they've got side by side, your bedrooms are upstairs, and you don't have a bedroom downstairs. So whether you move into this or not, and I think it would be charming. I think there's a lot of places where there's cottages on properties and all, all, all around it. When you drive by and you think, oh, that's really charming, there's something on, there's a secondary smaller house, probably 700 square feet or less, right? So if you look at that front yard, it's huge. 700 square feet is just like a blip. It's like, it seems like it'd be like the soda can in this little zone. I mean, it doesn't look very big on that lot, you know, especially if it's the roof line not starting out. So I don't have a problem with the cottage. I don't also have a problem with cottage. I do think you should evaluate that turning into that, that space for my business. 
I move, I move, move to approve. It does not look at private property. Okay. So, um, okay. and we, you do not um, typically require second or third party review of um, okay. reports, whether it's engineering reports or arborist reports. Um, they, um, you know, arborist that um, did the, has done many studies for different property owners. So, I know our tree warden is very comfortable with that arborist. I, I view that we approve uh, the site plan for this attached unit, uh, 88 Crescent, Got a second. Um, so, all in favor of approving this project per the motion, just raise your hand. Okay, we have unanimous five votes. Good luck, Mr. George. It is a, it is a very uh, a true treasure over on that street for sure. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful street. Okay, um, moving on to our last hearing of the evening. Next up is a, a site plan review for a detached second unit in the WSP district by Laura Minsky and Brom Wilson at thank you uh, 372 North Farmers Road in Florence. <laughs> Make yourselves comfortable and tell us about your project. <laughs> yeah, we, we have seen your drawings. Um, we've seen the uh, DPW report. Um, I know that um, so part of your part of your plan is to remove the driveway on on one side, and one of the DPW comments, um, you know, they have some stipulations on how you repair that. Uh, and how you grade um, the new driveway where it, where it meets the road. That one out too. Okay. Oh, I, here you go. I don't even know if anyone's. Yeah, this is for the Zoom people. Somehow we that's yes, so they can hear us. Um, okay, so board members. <laughs> Before we open it up for public comment, do we have any questions for the applicant? Um, my only questions are around, so you're putting in a new parking area. I saw there's a letter from a neighbor who is a little concerned about that. Is there any screening or anything planned for that? There is. Parking? What, do you know, can you describe what those are going to be? Like an arborvitae or something? Yeah. Yeah. 
we're, I mean, we're open to talk. Just so you know, the site plan does show both on the west side of the driveway and the north side um, additional uh, plantings to screen around. Going by memory, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't put that one up. I thought the I thought uh, there would be um, some drive for that. But there's a four foot fence around the heat pump, which is going to be on the side of the abutters. New units electric. Question is, is, does this require a front porch? Um, not a porch, a covered entry. Covered entry, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. It, it looks like the covered entry is in the back by these drawings. Let me just double check. Oh, yes, yes, it does. Yeah. It's recessed. Okay. Comment? Okay. At this time, um, is there anybody that would like to speak out here regarding this this project? And I am going to say, in all honesty, this is mom and dad over here. This is my parents. I'm here to check how she does. <laughs> Actually, my name is Ernest Ron, and my husband's over there. We're a butters to this property um, that's being discussed right now. And um, we've lived in our home for 55 years. I know we don't look that old, but we have. <laughs> um, we're not opposed to the new structure in any way. Um, Laura's parents can come and be close to the but We don't. Um, it, they're moving it from the front of the house to their, to their backyard, which is right next to our front yard uh, and right next to our property line. Um, and so when we look out our windows, we look right out onto this parking lot. So that's what we don't like. And we understand what they're trying to do. Um, and I, and I've, we've, I've, we've talked to Laura, so she knows what, that we were going to say this tonight. Um, but we're just asking them to um, consider keeping the property where it is in the front of their house. Get into where we're going to be looking at. So the question is, do you all have purview over that? Um, the, is, you want to make sure that if new dry, new parking is shown, that it's meeting all the standards and it meets the standards. Um, however, anyone at any time can relocate where their driveways are, and they don't even need planning work. So um, it could very, I mean, um, these property owners could not do the addition and still move their driveway. Um, so the, the real review is about the addition of that second unit and, then, and ensuring that there's enough parking for that second unit. And that the parking meets the standard. So you can't say this parking is not allowed. Um, and of course, you'd want to mitigate any issues Related to um, the introduction of new elements on the site, the applicant has shown that they're providing vegetation to parking area for many of the properties in cities have uh, much bigger and wider driveways, um, and wider both and longer, so accommodating. Relative to 
some trouble getting on the archive. Can you put the site plan on the screen, or is that not easy to do that? It's not straightforward, don't worry about it. Yep. Zoom in. Oh, there we go, yeah. Zoom in. Hold on. At the bottom there. Great, thank you. It's hard to know where else you would put the curb cut for a new house that's there. So, uh, and then if it comes down to someone being able to move parking at will after we approve, then I don't see what the is there a permit for a new curb cut. Yeah, it's through DPW. Yeah. And so their comments too relate to restoring the old curb cuts, right? And in fact, there's mm -hmm. two there. So this, um, you know, would eliminate the two there and down to one. Um, but here on out, yes, they'd have to sort of follow, they get a trench permit request. Also, some other comments about drainage um, that the, in the design, they want to share the driveway to, to continue. That could be a condition that you know, as sort of maintain that all the runoff from the driveway stay on site at the port as opposed to dumping it. Actual curb at this. Oh, they did. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose the applicant could, at their discretion, shift the parking area down the page of close to their own house. Um, I don't think I have any purview to. Any other um, public comment? Move to close public comment. Okay. I'll vote to close public comment. Questions? Further questions? Question? We um, we find ourselves in this position a lot, right? We have to we have to look at just what's in front of us, and then just like the last applicant that was here, we we only have the purview to approve what's in front of us. There's other conversations that happen after that. With neighbors. Waiving the traffic mitigation fee. We seem to be saying we'll keep sediment on site for all these projects, so let's keep saying that. <laughs> and the parking lot should be graded to retain stormwater. And you could, I mean, DPW has the jurisdiction to, uh, in, as part of the curb cut permit, to require that apron. Yeah. So you can either have it as another condition or I'm sure they can they would require it anyway because they have jurisdiction over 
how the tree gets cut. Leave it to the experts. <laughs> Parking, uh, traffic mitigation fee. Second. Okay, all in favor of uh, that motion? I lost you unanimous. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. It's so much faster, you don't have to do a roll call, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but the hotter it gets in here, the slower we get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can we just do a nice breeze wave, breeze though, just a second. There's more breeze here than there is downstairs. Okay. In that, oh, for, in that. Is that in chamber? Oh, in chamber. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't have the community road A and R because there's a little glitch in the um, survey. Um, it would have required a zoning board permit uh -huh. first, so it doesn't need that. Um, so that's not on your agenda. Um, the only other thing is summer schedule and then bylaws. I don't know if you want to. I actually. There were some modifications recommended by the zoning board for the bylaws that affected all of them. So what I might do is resend Which them. bylaws are we talking about? Sort of just the planning board's um, um, governing structure. Um, is that the one I missed, I guess? Yeah. yeah, the last one we had, right? Yeah, yeah. so what I'd like to do is resend it to you all after I make these edits. There were just clarifications, some punctuation, pretty minor stuff, but um, I think tightens it up. Um, and then we can have it on an agenda. We do have a meeting May 26th. Um, or here. Well, maybe there, because I'm working with Northampton Open Media to figure out how to use the bigger room. Windows open. Um, and, but, and that's a shorter, there, there are three permits for that hearing. I don't know anything yet about June. In terms of the summer schedule, it looks like July 14th and August 11th were the winners. Those are the dates I got. Say them again. I... Uh, July 14th and August 11th. Apparently not. You need to turn them off. Yeah, not using them. 90 minutes. Maybe we need to check one. <laughs> I agree. And that's in person. Right now. Yeah. That one? Yeah. Ooh, I, want to do Zoom after this. <laughs> I think we talked about possibly doing So, it, the, what do you want to do? I need to know before I advertise and I advertise. I like not having 60 people here. <laughs> oh, I heard. What? <laughs> the end of June. What? Yeah. I know, right? Are we still in, we're still in the meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. We are. Oh, yeah. Do we have to decide on July and August now? We can decide next time? No, we can decide next meeting, but I'm just telling you that's what the okay. do. Oh, about Zoom. I'd like or to do that with George here, too. Yeah, so. yeah. True. Because <laughs> um, we want more people here so we can leave and still have a quorum. A motion. Here in August. Motion to, close, to close the meeting. Second. Okay. All in favor of closing the meeting. Yes. Yeah. Right. We are adjourned at 8.48. Good job, girl. Mm.